everybody, welcome back out here to Somerset Place for this edition of our Lost Building series. We are standing in what used to be the barnyard area here on the plantation where many of the outbuildings were located. To give you a little bit of perspective, uh, the Collins family home, the enslaved community dependencies that you can come and see and tour today, uh, they're located about a quarter to a half mile to my right. And so we're going to be focusing today on the threshing machine. Um, this is a device that was used for separating the seeds of the flax plant from the stalks. And flax was actually one of the minor cash crops here at Somerset Place. Uh, so the fibers inside of the stalks could be uh, woven into linen, which is a very strong fabric that was either used here in-house on the plantation or could have been exported as well. And the seeds were used in the manufacturing of flax oil as well as simply consumption uh, by humans and livestock. And so the uh, threshing machine was actually invented by Andrew Michael. He was a Scotsman uh, back in 1786. Um, and so we know that the, uh, uh, the late company, the original uh, founders of the plantation here, did actually have uh, a threshing machine located here on the plantation by 1806. So it was still a new uh, invention, modern technology for the area by the time that it was actually placed here on the plantation. It was likely located inside of a barn, um, possibly with other devices or its own freestanding barn uh, somewhere here in the barnyard area. Uh, and so the process uh, of how this machine works, we don't actually know the specifics of uh, the threshing machine that was located here at Somerset, um, but since it was only about 20 years after the first invention, it was probably very similar um, to the original device invented by uh, Andrew Michael here. Um, and so uh, to begin with, uh, enslaved persons, field hands like Judy and Lewis, they would be harvesting the flax, hauling it out here to the threshing machine, and then the stalks would be hand fed into an opening. Um, and inside uh, of this device, there is a series of drums that have fixed rakes. So they're gonna be turning, rotating here, um, and as the stalks are inserted into this device, they're going to be beating the stalks repeatedly uh, to try and separate the seeds uh, from uh, the rest of the plants. Uh, so these, these drums would have been turned by a series of gears powered probably by horses uh, in the beginning, but ultimately we do know that they shifted to water power from the canal here to my left. Um, and so that would have been probably turning a water wheel that then turned the gears uh, for the threshing machine itself. Um, after uh, the seeds would have been separated from the stalks in the threshing machine, enslaved persons would then have to winnow uh, uh, the seeds to separate the grain from the chaff. It possibly could have been done uh, inside of the me machine itself by a series of fans uh, that are also rotating powered by gears um, and, and winnowing the grains here. Uh, and so once you have the seeds, enslaved persons could then take them, haul them over to the four-story barn where they would be lifted up uh, as part of the water power grain elevator um, and stored there for, for future use um, or export as a cash crop. In terms of the stocks though, there's a few other steps that would be taken in terms of um, actually getting the fibers out of that crop. Uh, so enslaved persons uh, would then be uh, taking the stocks and putting it inside a machine known as a flax break to actually break the stock and gain access to the fibers inside. Um, flax breaks are essentially a wooden sawhorse. Uh, there's a series of wooden blades located in the base and then also in the hinged arm. Uh, so you're gonna be turning it, uh, uh, pushing down uh, on the stock, which is gonna break it in the shape of a W, um, and you're gonna be able to pull the fibers out from there. We do know in the 1839 inventory here that there were four flax breaks located inside of the machine house here at Somerset, which likely could have been close to the threshing machine. Uh, from that point, um, enslaved persons, possibly uh, a weaver like Rebecca, uh, would then be combing uh, the flax using a flax comb to essentially uh, uh, separate the fibers from each other, straighten them out, um, which so they could then be uh, spinning um, into, into the linen thread, uh, which would have been done inside of the manufactory, the loom house that Kathy covered in a previous video uh, here about a month ago. Um, and from there, these uh, uh, woven linens would either be used in-house here on the plantation or they could have been exported as well. Um, and so the threshing machine was in use until uh, the end of the Civil War, at which place, uh, at which time it was listed on the 1866 inventory uh, or, or sale uh, advertisement uh, for the plantation in that year. Um, ultimately, what happened to it after that is unknown, um, but uh, we know that it was standing at least until 1866. 
So that's a little bit about the threshing machine. If you come out to Somerset Place, you're actually gonna be driving right past this area through the former barnyard on your way uh, to the plantation site today. And if you take a guided tour, you're gonna to be learning a lot more about uh, life on this plantation uh, for the enslaved community, the Collins family, um, and other uh, free laborers here uh, as well. Uh, if you have any comments, questions uh, about this video, please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe as well to stay up to date with this channel. And we look forward to seeing you guys out here real soon. Thank you. Thank you.